Sue Rodriguez, age 42, is an amyotrophic lateral sclerosis patient, also known as ALS. Her condition is slowly deteriorating, meaning that she will lose her ability to talk, move, eat, and breathe without assistance. She does not wish to give up her life. However, when the time comes when she will lose her ability to enjoy life on her own, she wishes for a physician to aid her in her suicide. However, according to Section 241B of the Charter, it states that everyone is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term of not more than 14 years who, whether suicide ensues or not, aid a person to die by suicide. The section of the Criminal Code, however, infringes with Section 7 of the Charter, which states everyone has a right to life, liberty, and security of the person, and the right not to be deprived thereof, except in accordance of the principles of fundamental justice. Concerning the principles of fundamental justice in Section 7, it requires a fair balance to be struck between the interests of the state and the individual. However, this is not a principle of fundamental justice, as assisted suicide seems to benefit Rodriguez rather than society. She appealed her case to the Supreme Court of BC but lost, and further appealed to the Supreme Court of Canada. But the question here is, does Section 241B of the Criminal Code violate Section 7 of the Charter? Section 241B infringes with Section 7 because the invalidity of her request will cause her diseases physically and psychologically hurt her, which infringes with the security of the person, and since she is unable to die under her wishes, that infringes with her liberty. Section 241B also infringes with Section 15, Subsection 1, which states that the individual is equal before and under the law and has a right to equal protection and equal benefit of the law without discrimination based on race, sex, religion, mental or physical disability. Section 241B infringes this right because it creates inequality which prevents physically disabled individuals to end their lives upon their request. This issue causes a disadvantage as it puts limits on individuals that are subjected to this inequality and prevents them from their fundamental decisions concerning their lives. The principles of self-determination and individual autonomy is also limited in this situation. Now I will be connecting Rodriguez versus British Columbia with another case that is similar to this one named Carter versus Canada, and I will be explaining how this case infringes Section 7. In the case of Carter v. Canada, Kate Carter, a woman with spinal stenosis, found herself in pain, causing mobility limitations while leaving her cognitive functions intact. When the pain of living became intolerable, she asked her son-in-law, Lee Carter, and daughter, Hollis Johnson, to help her travel to Switzerland to an all-assisted suicide clinic. They eventually agreed despite recognizing the consequences. This case connects to Section 7 because this decision declared that Section 241B of the Criminal Code, which prohibits a physician's assistance in terminating life, infringes upon the right to life, liberty, and security of the person for individuals who want access to physician-assisted death. After stating all the legal facts and connections the Rodriguez v. BC case has on Section 241B of the Criminal Code and Section 7 of the Charter and the Carter v. Canada case, I hope that you have learned about how Section 7 protects one's rights and society as a whole. Thank you for listening to my presentation.